What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the DFS Dose YouTube channel. I'm Ben Hover, and today we are taking a look at the top cash game plays on DraftKings. If you like what you see today, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out more than you know. And if you ever want to connect with us, you can find out all the ways to do so in the description below. We drop two podcasts per week, TikToks daily, live stream Q&A on Saturday night on this YouTube channel, free Discord chat, and more. But look, you know, we've been waiting a good, what, seven months to get back into the NFL DFS streets. I'm going to stop beating around the bush and get right into it. The purpose of this video series is to go position by position, sort of narrow down the pool of players you should be considering, explain why, and then sort of leave the rest up to you to make the best decisions, but you know, just sort of get a good baseline. At the quarterback position, as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty tight for cash games. There are only a few places that I really feel comfortable going. Tournaments, that's an entirely different story, but in cash, we need a good combination of floor and ceiling, not just ceiling. And I think dollar for dollar, Josh Allen is probably the best play on the board. Despite the $7,400 price tag, you could very easily make a case that he is a value. He should potentially be priced over 8K. The Bills are at home. They have a rising implied team total, currently third highest on the slate at 27 and a half. And just the sheer volume of pass attempts mixed with the deep passing nature of the Bills offense is going to generate just a prolific amount of yards for Josh Allen on a week-to-week -week basis. However, if we zoom out a little bit, just from a roster construction standpoint and like a salary allocation standpoint, I do think that it makes a little bit sense to drop a tier at quarterback, save the $1,000, and find yourself in that Ryan Tannehill, Jalen Hurts range. Tannehill is slightly more shaky to me than Jalen Hurts just because you never know if it's going to be one of those monster Derrick Henry games where he siphons off three touchdowns, runs for 200 yards, and Tannehill's just sitting there winning the game, not having to do much. I mean, I don't see that happening just because of the terrible nature of the Tennessee Titans defense and how I think Kyler Murray's going to put pressure on the Titans to, you know, win through the passing game. But just in terms of straight floor and ceiling combination, I do like Jalen Hurts a lot in this spot. In his four starts last season, he was averaging 11 and a half rush attempts per game for 68 yards in that span and managed to score three touchdowns across the four game stretch. His rushing expectation mirrors the elite quarterbacks in the league, but he's not priced like that. He's priced like a traditional pocket passer, $100 more than Kirk Cousins, $200 more than Big Ben, and the list goes on. Just from a game environment standpoint in this Philly Falcons game, the two teams both have lackluster defenses. The Falcons are going to struggle to run the ball in this spot against Philly. I mean, I think they're going to struggle to run the ball all season, but it's going to be a paced up game with a lot of pass attempts on the Atlanta side of the ball and with Hurts. His unique floor and ceiling combo for a mid 6k quarterback is just something that we have to absolutely pounce on until DK corrects that potentially as early as next week. Moving on to the running back position, as you can see on the screen, I think that the players that we should be considering for cash are mostly just the top tier studs of the NFL. We've got Christian McCaffrey, fully healthy, should see his usual monstrous workload. Not much else needs to be said. Dude's an absolute beast and playing him in cash, as far as I can remember, has never been a bad idea. Right below him for $400 cheaper, 9100 Dalvin Cook is the centerpiece of Minnesota's offense, and they get a cake matchup against Cincinnati. Personally, I mean, I'm expecting the Bengals to get completely rolled over in this spot. It's Joe Burrow's first game back from an injury. A highly suspect offensive line is going to be out there for the Bengals, and the improved defense for the Vikings just sets up really poorly for Cincinnati. I think the Vikings are going to have total control over this game, which sets really well up for a Dalvin Cook run-centric game plan. And then finally, my favorite play of the week, by far any position on the site, is Alvin Kamara, who it just appears that the stars have absolutely aligned for. In the eight games that Alvin Kamara has played without Michael Thomas, and as we know, Michael Thomas is on the PUP list, so he will not be on the field until at least week seven, Kamara's averaged 8.62 targets per game, seven catches, and over 70 receptions, and somehow, some way, 30.89 fantasy points per game in games without Michael Thomas. From a cash game lineup construction standpoint, I don't think that it's really an either or situation. I think the optimal build, and we'll get to it in a minute, is going to consist of a lot of cheap wide receivers that allow you to get at least two of these two top tier stud running backs in. However, if you find yourself in a position where you can't stomach it and you want to play only one of these running backs, Kamara is the guy. He is the top running back play on DraftKings this week. 
I did include Najee in this list because I think that he pretty clearly projects for well over 20 touches and comes at an affordable price tag, 6,300. A lot of people are excited to play Joe Mixon. I mean, Joe Mixon chalk makes me just like want to throw up in my mouth. I cannot do Joe Mixon chalk, especially, I mean, like I said, just the way I project that game to go is Minnesota rolling over them. Yeah, maybe Joe Mixon's role in the passing game is elevated from previous years with the departure of Gio Bernard, but just projecting this Bengals offense and where the targets are going to go, I think I think it's really shaky right now. We don't know what Jamar Chase's, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd shares are going to be. I can't project Joe Mixon. C.J. Uzoma should be more involved than people expect. I don't know. I'm perfectly comfortable having no Joe Mixon in week one. Now, at wide receiver, like I briefly alluded to, there is just so much value on this slate. It's hard just to not lock in three of these cheap guys. I mean, 5K and below, we've got Corey Davis at 4,900, who is arguably the best play on the board with Jamison Crowder out, confirmed, Keelan Cole potential to miss this game. All they've got is Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, who I also think is cash game viable at the min price 3K, and Denzel Mims, who's been a non-factor in all of Jets training camp. We've also got T. Higgins at 4,700, arguably the Bengals' number one wide receiver. Marvin Jones Jr. at 3,600, and I talked about it on the podcast this week, but you know, with these target shares that are highly ambiguous, like in the Jaguars' offense, you know, Marvin Jones being $1,400 less than LaVisca and even cheaper than that compared to DJ Chark, I think that Marvin Jones is just a stone value. He could easily finish with the most targets from Trevor Lawrence in this spot, and at 3600 we're attacking that against the Houston Texans. Marquez Callaway, he is going to be the highest owned wide receiver on the slate, 3,400, Jameis Winston's number one wide receiver in a projected high scoring game against the Packers. And then there's just a plethora of 3K wide receivers. Like I said, Elijah Moore should primarily dominate slot snaps for the Jets in Jamison Crowder's absence. A lot of people want to play Rondale Moore. I mean, personally, I'm good on that. Curtis Samuel was placed on IR, short-term IR, only three weeks, but in that absence, we expect Diami Brown to step up. Terrace Marshall's min price. I mean, the options at cheap wide receivers are plentiful. The optimal build, pretty clearly in my opinion, is playing a mid-range quarterback, a mid-range tight end, two expensive running backs, and then finding the value at wide receiver. However, at the top, I mean, clearly, Calvin Ridley, Stefan Diggs are great plays. I included Keenan Allen on the list just because there are some really interesting cash game builds that leave you with 6,900 for one final player in the flex. And God, I mean, Keenan Allen, 10 plus targets guaranteed. Austin Eckler could miss this game. And at 6,900, I mean, Keenan Allen is a great value. I mean, his target projection is very close to Stefan Diggs and Calvin Ridley. I guess the downside would be the touchdown expectation, and to me, that's why Calvin Ridley is the best play of the group. Yes, you could try and find some money to get up to Devontae Adams or Tyreek Hill, but Calvin Ridley at 7,900, no Julio. I, I love this spot. I think he's going to decimate Darius Slay. Hate to say it, I love Darius Slay, but God, Calvin Ridley in this spot is an absolute smash. And just quickly going back to the value plays just to make my position known, I, I think that T. Higgins is really interesting at his price point, and Jerry Judy in that same range, 4,800, is interesting too. But Corey Davis, with all of the injuries to the Jets players, projects, in my opinion, easily for 10 plus targets in this spot. I think that he is the best play under 5K. The concern is can you stomach playing? two Jets wide receivers. If you're playing Elijah Moore and Corey Davis in the same lineup, you're really banking on a lot from Zach Wilson in his first NFL game. I don't know if you want to be on the two Jets wide receivers and cash bandwagon. It seems like something could go wrong there. However, if you were not on the Elijah Moore bandwagon and you're sitting there trying to decide between Jerry Judy, T. Higgins, Corey Davis, Corey Davis, I think is the clear cut pick. And finally, the tight end position. It is Kyle Pitts chalk week. I mean, Joey and I on the podcast and on this YouTube channel talked about it the second that the DraftKings salaries opened up. Kyle Pitts is a stone value. 4400 is the cheapest he is going to be all season long. Kyle Pitts is a literal cheat code at 4400 I mean, God, he'll probably be above 5 k by next week, and it won't be long before he's in that 6 k 7 k range like George Kittle and Travis Kelsey. 
I found myself playing with lineup builds where, you know, you come down off Kyle Pitts. I like Anthony Ferkser at 3,200. He struggled in camp, but that's more of a GPP pivot because people are going to be off of him due to the negative press while he should remain very heavily involved in the Titans offense as the pass catching tight end, sort of absorbing the Jonu Smith role as Jonu leaves town, goes to New England. I think Ferkser is, is a good bet to catch a touchdown and at 3,200, that's all you need. There's definitely some interest in Tyler Croft at 2,500. I think it makes sense with a rookie quarterback. You know, these players do tend to lean on tight ends in that spot. They're easy to complete passes. And at 2,500, the stone man, I mean, God, you only need, what, six, seven, eight points to pay off value with Tyler Croft. To me, you're just giving up a lot. You're really capping your ceiling. I mean, Kyle Pitts theoretically can drop 20 plus in his first NFL game. I don't think that's really the case for Ferkser or Croft, or even some of the other players that I've seen touted around the industry, you know, the Zach Ertzes of the world, Logan Thomas could theoretically get there, but I'm not paying above Kyle Pitts unless we're going all the way up to Kelsey and George Kittle. And anybody who's watched this YouTube channel or listened to the DFS Dose podcast knows we never pay up for tight end in cash. So just to summarize, bringing it back to the roster construction as a whole, I think that the key to this slate is going to be playing Two of the high-priced running backs, CMC, Cook, Camara. I think you're going to be finding value at wide receiver, whether it be with Callaway, Marvin Jones, Elijah Moore. You're probably going to have one of those mid-range, high-end 4K, low-end 5K guys like LaVisca, potentially, or Corey Davis, T. Higgins, Jerry Judy. Some people are going to be interested in. Tight end. Kyle Pitts. And at quarterback, yeah, I mean, you can find the money to get up to Allen or maybe Murray if you prefer. Ryan Tannehill should be involved in a stone shootout. But to me, I am a believer in Jalen Hurts at 6,400. I'm putting my money where my mouth is and I am playing this man in DraftKings cash. I don't know. That's that's just how it is. I'm playing Jalen Hurts. And if it hurts me, so be it, you know? I don't know. Maybe I'm too bullish on Jalen Hurts. Drop a comment below. You know, is Jalen Hurts just too bad of a real life quarterback to be worth the stone chalk in DraftKings week one? I don't know. I'm comfortable with it. Maybe I'm wrong. Drop a comment. Let me know. And if there's any players that you think I missed in this cash pool, you know, players that should be considered for cash, drop that in the comments below. I'm definitely interested to hear what the viewers out there think. Like I said at the top of the video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. We do this series every single week. Joey does a GPP video. I do this cash game video on Fridays. And if you're curious to find out our final thoughts on the slate, we do a stream on Saturday evenings, late night stream. You can join the Discord or follow us on Twitter to find out when exactly we're going to be going live. And that's going to be it, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the DraftKings streets this week.